right, let's, uh, we'll go around, but first of all, I want to say thank you. It's cool to be here. You know, I, I uh, as I sometimes do, I get lost in my door where, where I'm going. And I was coming up from the, uh, uh, I was coming up from Norwich, so I was heading north. And there was, I was on the phone, and there was construction um, on Interstate 89, so I went right by the exit I was supposed to be oh, getting no. on. Oh, no. But you know, it worked out, because I have never been on this road. Uh, you know, you cut, what, what is it called, Little Wilson Road? The one right out here? Yeah, Little Miller. Uh, Miller it's Extension. Miller yeah. Extension. Yes. Yeah, so I've never, it's a beautiful road. It oh, my it's one of the prettiest it's, drives in the park. That's how we get here every day. <laughs> it was so beautiful. So, you know, just one of the joys of being a member of Congress uh, in Vermont, you get to get lost every once in a while and discover new roads. And here, at the end of it, is this beautiful school. It was really terrific. So today, what I'd like to do is uh, go around after I introduce uh, commis uh, Commissioner Rosenworcel. Um, she's one of my favorite people in government in Washington, all right? You know why? She, like, gets the job done. She has an incredibly hard job. The Federal Communication Commission has extraordinary uh, jurisdiction. And there's been a long time battle uh, since I went to Congress in, uh, in 2007 about uh, focusing on rural areas and the needs we have uh, for broadband, high speed internet. And uh, we, she has been a pioneer in having a commitment to extending broadband uh, to rural America. And, you know, we had a big, really kind of a hard battle. Uh, in Congress, because a lot of the urban areas had higher speed internet, and they just didn't, they just didn't understand how it was different in most of rural America. And that's, by the way, whether you're a red state or a blue state, you know, it really didn't matter. Well, with COVID, of course, you couldn't do your homework, you couldn't go to work. In many cases, you couldn't get a uh, appoint a medical appointment unless you had high speed internet. And then one of the uh, areas where uh, Jessica was absolutely the pioneer was on the importance of rural broadband for uh, rural education. And the homework gap is something that was uh, she began talking about, and that was the fact that so many kids uh, whose schools were assigning homework that required access to the internet didn't have it. And uh, it was really a major. Uh, it, jo it was a. It was a major point of bringing a lot of members of Congress, Republicans and Democrats, together because all of our kids had the same challenge. Whether it just didn't matter what your politics were, we're all concerned about the well-being of our kids. And then uh, she's pushed that to the point where we're trying to get internet on our buses, and it's making a real concrete and practical difference. And it was interesting talking. Uh, to our bus driver technological person, where is he? <laughs> yeah, about you starting out uh, uh, your career in, in, in driving a school bus. Correct. And now the technology officer here and in, 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 uh, getting uh, the, uh, the capacity to have high speed internet, uh, <coughs> high speed internet on the buses. So, Jessica, I, I just want to express to you my gratitude and what a pleasure it's been. Uh, I've served on committees that have worked with the FCC uh, when I was in Congress and now that I'm in the Senate. And it's just been a pleasure for me to see a public servant who gets it and has the capacity to implement and work her way around what are, you know, very difficult political times uh, in the Congress to still get things done. So I'll come back to you, but first let's go around and have everybody introduce themselves uh, quickly. Hi, uh, I'm uh, Lisa Helm. I'm with the Agency of Education. I'm the State Coordinator of Education Technology and the State E-Rate uh, Coordinator for Schools. Hi, I'm Stefan Boatwright. I teach uh, high school history, social studies electives here at Williamstown. Cool. I'm Jake Beeling. I also teach high school history elective social studies here at Williamstown. Hi, I'm Amelia. I'm a junior here at the high school. Hello, I'm Natalie, and I'm also a junior. Thanks for coming, you guys. My name is Trey Cates, and I'm the uh, Director of Technology here for the Central Vermont Supervisory Union. Uh, I'm Riley Ladner, and I'm also a junior here. I'm Brooke Nadsom, and I am the librarian here at the school. Uh, Jerry Hudak, I'm the principal of the high school, middle high school. Mm -hmm. Cool. 
I'm Matthew Fetters, the school superintendent of this great school, as well as five others from Northfield, Williamstown, Orange, and Washington. That's great. And now, let's turn this over to the chairwoman, Jessica rosen oh. uh, And th Again, I'm, I'm uh, embarrassing you by uh, praising you so much, but it's just a common feeling about uh, this extraordinary uh, public servant that we have here, in right here, <laughs> in the middle school right now. Jessica, oh my go goodness. Ahead. Williamstown. Are a lot of pressure. All right. Um, <laughs> Well, you know, I was thinking it's terrific to be here for three reasons. First of all, I got to know Senator Welch when he was Congressman Welch, and such an eloquent advocate for the state, and also the importance of broadband everywhere, well before the pandemic, well before it was trendy to talk about students and how they needed it. And that get it factor always really appealed to me, and also his willingness to work with anyone in Congress who wanted to get something done. To me, that's the only mode you can operate in in Washington. I've always kind appreciated of, that as kind of the Vermont way, right? Right. Mm -hmm. and we have to figure out how to get along. And you know, and, and the that second, can be tough at times. <laughs> and the second reason I'm really happy to be here is, well, I'm from New England, and my family has lived off and on in Winhall, Vermont, for the past 20 years. So uh, I realize it's the southern part of the state, but um, I have deep ties to this area of the country. It's still my favorite place to be. I can have that bias, or at least I can tell you about it. And then finally, I'm really excited to be here because I think coming out of the pandemic, for the first time as a nation, we've really grappled with the digital divide. Congress has set aside billions of dollars to make sure that infrastructure reaches everyone everywhere. We are starting to recognize that this is an infrastructure requirement on par with what we did for rural electricity a century ago. And I've long felt that was necessary, but I've also long felt that we need to have a very targeted effort to make sure every student everywhere has the internet access they need to succeed. I mean, I didn't need it when I was growing up. I needed paper, pencil, my brother leaving me alone. Was the third one was the hard one. Um, but that's not true today, and every child out in rural and urban America needs internet access at school right. and at home. And we have to attack that problem in lots of ways, being creative about E-rate, thinking about rural students and how long they sit on a bus, supporting the build out of infrastructure to some of our most remote communities. And I just feel that this effort to put Wi-Fi on our school buses can make a really meaningful difference for a whole bunch of students right now. And uh, I want to do it with some urgency. So I got a majority to commit to it about a week ago. And next week, we'll be voting on it. And so we're coming up here to talk about it and get a sense of what it would look like in action. And no better place to do that than Vermont. Yeah, and just so you know, we, we've had, it's, the politics in Washington are tough, as you all know, and that it, it seeps its way not just in Congress, but in some of our agencies. So Jessica's had a 3-2 majority. We've had a long time getting it fully complemented. And, I, I, and not that this is your problem, okay, <laughs> it's our problem, uh, but uh, your capacity to work with others and you know, create some trust and consensus uh, is, uh, is, is, is what's so essential to us getting things done. Uh, but w why don't we uh, go around a little bit and hear, I'd love to hear from some of the students yeah. and you know what you contend with doing your homework and how long your bus rides are and how this you think might help. Um, so when I ride the bus um, home, I live on 64. So it's a good 30 minute drive just because we have to go around um, the woods area. Um, and I have a little sister who's seven years old, so you know she gets really distracted really easily. Um, Is she on the bus with you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a Wi-Fi being added to the bus can be really helpful if it has access to students for parents especially to know where their kid is at all times when mm -hmm. they like get worried because they're on the bus and they're not with them. Um, and also for like, younger students who may just need something to like listen to to like kind mm -hmm. of stay calm because a bus environment can be very stressful and overwhelming for many students especially mm -hmm. younger ones um, so I think it will be a really good improvement. That's great. Um, I have like an hour ride but or hour long bus ride and I really do take my academics seriously so I love having as much time as I can to work on my schoolwork and I feel like it would be very important to put in like these technologies on the buses because an hour is a really useful time. That That's a lot of time. It's two hours to mm -hmm. and from. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, some students have to leave earlier to get buses for sports games or over to Northfield. Yeah. And so that's cutting out of class time. And so if we can have them work on the bus, that would be a lot of time that they could have to uh -huh. make up and not fall behind with their classes. Because last year I saw that there was a lot of people who were falling behind in their classes at the end of the day who were having to leave for other things. Mm -hmm. So how long is your bus ride? Uh, it's an hour. I'm actually her neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else just want to talk about? Well, sure. I can't speak for all teachers in the building, but for me, myself, I assign nothing on paper due to the pandemic. And even now that COVID's kind of coming back, there's been a lot of students that have been out, and I like them to be able to access their learning digitally at any time. Uh, but from the pandemic, almost its immediate onset, we saw that there were some Wi-Fi issues at home. And I've heard about Wi-Fi issues just kind of patchiness because it's rural Vermont. And so being able to work on the bus, I think for a lot of kids, it's going to be downright revolutionary. <laughs> we use um, an online platform called Schoology, and students would be able to access not only their various types of learning, but uh, different types of documents, videos. I mean, really the full classroom experience just coming to and from school. So I think it's a great idea. I mean, to go, to go with that, Stefan, I, I know that one of my advisees um, she, her living situation is such that she doesn't have any Wi-Fi at home. Um, and last school year, I would see her coming in for the last like half hour of the day and just like printing stuff off. Because everything is being assigned digitally now, she would be printing off web pages and web pages and web pages so that she could read them at home. Oh, I see, yeah. yeah. Um, now, was that a, an expense issue, or was it a cost issue, or was it an availability issue? For her, it, I, I believe that it was a, a, a cost, cost issue. issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a, an, yeah, so that'll, that'll so that So being yeah. able to spend that extra uh, long bus ride, I, I don't know exactly how long she had, but having that little bit more time to and from school to be able to access this work. But also not having to print out all yes. those web pages I know. ferociously at the end of the day before going yeah. home. Yeah, and, and that's if you can print them out. I mean, if you're assigned a TED Talk to watch. That's right. right. You know, like right. you can't print out a TED Talk. Right. <laughs> I mean, you can print out the transcript, but it's lost in translation, obviously. So it'll be, it'll, so you can stream on this then. So if it's like a TED Talk, you're going to have the technology here. Right, so, so people that don't have access, they'd be able to get that on the bus and then read the rest of it out. <laughs> so uh, I have a, only a very brief time in Vermont. I'm actually originally, I, I worked in New York for a number of years before yeah. I moved up here. Um, I will say that any sort of travel time that students have, if they have the capability of being able to access their classwork during that time, it also helps to just like, I, I worked in Midtown, Manhattan, so we had students coming from the Bronx, from Brooklyn. They would have 45-minute subway rides, but they had access to better uh, telephone connections because mm -hmm. of the urban setting, right? So if they could have access their homework, that then would allow that hour transition. And some students go slightly beyond an hour, depending on the bus route, um, where then once they get home, they would then be able to spend time with their family and those types of people to also right. do other things where it's not here's an hour block where I'm waiting to then have access to then maybe have a couple hours before I go to bed at the end of the night, you know? Mm -hmm. So it, it helps to kind of make that more meaningful and to also give them that ability to sit there and have access to it for the hour that they would normally not have much to do. So let me just ask the students a little bit, because, you know, you get out of school, it's kind of fun to hang out. Uh, but but a bus isn't necessarily the best place to hang out, you know. I, I, I never had to ride a bus. In the old days, I had to walk to school. But um, uh, the, I'll ask the question of some skeptics that you'll just surf the net as opposed to use it uh, for homework activities. But even that seems like if it's a calming situation, if it helps calm the transition uh, so you have better time uh, with your friends. Uh, just uh, speak to speak to us a little bit about that and how you see it playing out. I'm trying to think, sorry. Um, 
I think it will, like, how, like you're asking, like, how um, having more time on the bus to do your homework and then having time to socialize? Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. Um, I think it will plan out really well. I mean, as juniors, we all are, all of us are very academic focused, so we're all very focused on getting our grades up towards yeah. colleges. So, I mean, Natalie and I, we would try to hang out, but we both take AP classes, uh -huh. so we have a ton of homework, but having access to it um, on the bus right home gives us plenty of time to get it done. Yeah. How um, much homework would you say you have tonight um, in like, terms of time? Uh, so for our AP English class, we have to read, it, like we have reading ones to do, which um, are usually on paper, but then we have essays to write, which mm -hmm. we have the week to write, and we do ours online just because it's like easier for mm -hmm. most students um, to just like not have to write it down, right. um, handwriting wise. Um, which would take up to an hour, hour and a half. Mm -hmm. um, but having access on a bus to be able to do that, yeah. I think, would give a lot more time for people to be able to socialize, and which would help into the mental health strategy. Mm -hmm. So I think this would really help students um, mentally be happier after getting homework done, and then being able to socialize with family and friends, and just like sports. Again, with like what Riley Lagner was saying, you'd be able to do your sports too, and be able to stay um, caught up. So, I mean, it, it just makes so much sense. It's, instead of that being dead time, mm -hmm. it's useful time. I, I, yeah. You made me think, like, people that might say, oh, you know, they'll just be on Snapchat, or they'll be, you know, YouTube, and, like, this is, a, I mean, as a librarian, like, this is about access, mm -hmm. I guess. And so what if they're on Snapchat? like? That's like part of if being that, a kid. Yeah. I mean, in this in a community like this, if you if they don't have access at home, right? Like this is leveling the playing field, and whether that's academically or socially or whatever it is, it's giving everybody access to the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I do believe, and you guys should talk. I shouldn't be talking, <laughs> but <laughs> but like yeah, like. Are they going to plug into their homework the entire bus ride? Probably not. But like we're talking about like 13, 14, 15 year olds, right? Like I'm 35. I wouldn't plug in for the full hour hour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and but if they need to, but if they need, need to, they can. And if they want to get in touch with like like oh, everybody's watching this cool video. I want to do it too. And we have mm -hmm. great uh, stop filtering <laughs> here, so they can't be <laughs> here. <laughs> you know. Like, well, actually, the filtering will, will, the filtering be, will be on the, the bus. the same network yeah. that right. E-rate funds. Correct, it is. So right. on school yeah. on school devices, it will still be filtered. Um, but the the issue of equity is exactly what you're bringing up. Mm -hmm. So whereas students who had who could afford an iPhone and a data plan, and their parents could you know, pay for that, and they'd be on their own personal device on the way home. For students who don't have that ability, they now can get out their school device and have connectivity to some, not all the content, but you know, to things that they, some right. of it could be educational, some of it could be in, in entertainment, or just they could be doing their homework, but it does give them an opportunity where they never had that opportunity uh, before. And, and to add to the conversation, you know, what yeah. we saw from the Agency of Education, when the pandemic hit and we had to all go remote, not all of our schools were on one-to-one, -one, meaning we had a one divide, and, and so obviously federal funds came in and did help with that. But the way we're doing education, as you were saying, is changed. Yeah. And so we, I mean, having a device or access, that connectivity, you know, is so important. And I was looking up uh, figures for the state. E-rate in the history of the program, there's been more than $53 million dollars uh, dispersed here in Vermont and uh, Trey's smiling because we it's a very um, carved out niche for this fund but just so important in terms of helping districts to have that connectivity and we've seen over the inception of the program that demand for the funds has steadily you know grown year over year on average we see a, a growth of about 3.5 million Wow. And so it's a it's it, the expanding to the school bus is is just a great recognition that uh, we're learning all the time. Yeah, you know it's interesting. Um, yeah. Not all my colleagues they're worried about the expansion, and I went back and I looked that during the Bush administration, we had actually funded um, not just broadband and internet connections but also voice connections in schools. Yeah. Uh, technology was different back then, 
but we also um at this time all 11th grade students should report to the PAO. things don't change yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but that we used to actually fund wireless phones on the school buses for safety purposes i didn't know that yeah I, yeah yeah and yeah. I, so it's really interesting that made sense then we're just doing the same thing now because what makes sense in the moment we're in where yeah. everyone needs a one-to-one -one device yeah. is that we turn that into connected time for homework and especially for the students who don't have access at home um, i'm just well, curious yeah. in this community how much you sense that there are students or maybe you have some friends who have limited <coughs> access at home um yeah i mean after the flood especially i know a good a good amount of students especially down on our main street <coughs> town who lost their homes, which means that they lost most of their access to um, Wi-Fi. Um, I know a lot of, Williamstown is a great community, but we also have a lot of people that are unable to have access to internet or to higher advanced technology um, because of income. And I will say, I think a good, teachers might be able to add on to this more, um, but I think a majority, a good, not majority, but a good amount of students at both the elementary and the high school um, have it hard to be able to have access to it um, and especially with what you guys were saying ever since like COVID we've just been online right um, so it's just like yeah you'd be correct on being like it's a lot of students are unable to have access to the things that they need to have access to to be proficient throughout school and then throughout college if they decide to go in well, and I think what you have proposed, and we are all hopefully will get past at general <coughs> meeting, is re it's really about flexibility in learning and access, and um, that recognition we don't all learn the same way. Uh, whether we're on Snapchat, maybe they're discussing the latest assignment. Possibly not, but they could be. And having that access just becomes so important, and, and people don't stand out because they don't have. There have been a lot of great federal programs through the pandemic that have come through the Affordable uh, Connectivity Program, for example, um, that are seeking to do that. But what you also find in homes is the bandwidth they may have in that home doesn't accommodate the entire family. And so you don't have good access. And so offering it as another option, especially on a school-provided device, gives that student that exclusive opportunity to learn. Peter, we have about five more minutes of time. Anyway. You know, I just want to say one thing about the Snapchat in COVID. So much, you know, I, I just want to express my appreciation to the teachers, the school board, and to the students. We didn't, Jessica and I didn't go through a situation in school where we were online for a couple of years, you know, it was just unreal. <laughs> and so much of the school is, also learning to socialize, learning how to navigate, how to accept other people that are different, how to <coughs> respect other people. And that's a lot of interaction. So that tool, if you're de deprived it, which is, you know, it is pervasive in our society. So not having access to it really uh, compounds the isolation that I think everyone experienced, you guys uniquely. Mm -hmm. So I just want to express my gratitude for you for getting through that because we none of us face that. <coughs> it's a whole new situation, and, and we called on a lot of special effort by the teachers, by <coughs> community leaders. <coughs> so I think it's really important what you're doing. Thank you. No, and it's cool what you did because it's. Uh, and you guys should have some pride in, in your you know being able to get through that. Um, and that, that wasn't asked of your parents uh, uh, or your grandparents. So uh, it, 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 it's, it's nice to be here with Jessica uh, in these buses where there's going to at least be something that, that is, be something you need and it's going to be provided. Uh, so it's just, a, and I, you know what I love too, listening to you talk about was your community and your concern for other people who didn't have the circumstances you had. I mean, that, that is so beautiful. Seriously, it's just, and it's like the most important thing in life, you know, you help other people. So um, it's so nice to be in this community. It's just great. This is a fabulous community. I, I'm just starting my third year in it. We have world-class teachers and world-class students, and they they have the ability to compete in a global market. Right. This 
um, expansion of E-rate gives them more opportunity to access the information yeah. they need to be those competitors. Well, you know, I think this is what makes you and I happy. We're in Washington. Our job is to try to do things that have policies that make a difference back home so you can be successful. And, you know, Jessica, you've done, even the FCC have done such a good job on that. This is exciting. We've talked about this for a while. Yeah. Um, and uh, there's a lot of noise, but we're sharing a bus. It's very shortly going to be outfitted like this, and hopefully you can be a model for the rest of the yeah. country, especially rural communities, where I think this is especially meaningful. And by the way, I just want to say David Shear here from uh, Congresswoman Ballot. Uh, and Haley, where are you? Okay. Right here. From right. Senator Sanders. Hi. And uh, Bernie and uh, Becca uh, and I are working, you know, hand in hand <clears throat> on all these issues. And we're full partners. And, uh, and so I just want you to know you've got the full support of all three of us. We're small but mighty. <laughs> <laughs> just like Williams. <Williamstown. laughs> just like Williamstown. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, it, it's exactly right. Um, we got a board member over there. Do you want to say anything? Um, no, I would just is, say we have a couple of board members. Couple, yeah, that's right. So you've got to support this, you know. During COVID, uh, trying to be uh, conduct a school board meeting was not easy. Um, it certainly not approaches. It doesn't approach the problems that a student would have. Um, but we were. I was using a high speed, so advertised as high speed satellite, mm -hmm. and. Uh, we were knocked off constantly, off and on, and it was a During struggle board to stay meetings. connected. <clears throat> and when I was connected and had to make a decision, we had to make a, a it was a vote, I, I put up a finger because no one could hear anything I had to say. And I said, well, you can, I see his, I see his, thumbs up. Um, so, Madam, I'd like to have a few moments afterward to just ex explain something that I see as a problem. Uh, we don't have to go into it here now. You don't mind. No problem. Yes, no, just I, you know, I certainly agree. I think running virtual board meetings was nothing compared to running a virtual school, uh, and you know, seeing you know, and, and understanding kids struggling at home with uh, either the lack of, of internet access or the lack of, of um, fast enough internet to do right. what they need to do, which is still very much a struggle in our community. Mm -hmm. You know, the final word here, I just want to emphasize something, Jessica, that you said. <clears throat> Rural America can't be second-class America. It just can't be. So, you know, we made a decision in this country when electrification was coming through. And the, the, the decision was not an economic one. It was, a, it was a political and social one. And it was that we were going to electrify places where there wasn't a lot of profit to be made by getting electricity to the last farm on the dirt road. <clears throat> and what we've been pushing for, uh, Bernie and Becca and Jessica in the lead, uh, is to have that commitment when it comes to broadband because it is so essential. I mean, you can't be a modern person. You wouldn't have a future without your yeah. access. No, sir, you know yeah. you know that. And it's not just because you want to do YouTube or other things. And why shouldn't you want to do that, right? Mm -hmm. But it's because you know that you can't be in the world uh, without an essential tool. Yep. So uh, this is an ongoing challenge. For me, it's also an area, though, where all that division that none of us like, really, that you're seeing in Washington, it's an area where we can work together. Because when I, when I talk to my uh, Republican colleagues and I ask them, how's internet where you are in the rural areas, is they get, I, I get this, it's like I'm talking to me here. <laughs> you know what I mean? So then we are talking about a common uh, challenge and they generally want to do what's good for the folks they represent, as I do. So it's a way of bringing us together. So I just, uh, I think it's great what you've done here. And the implementation part is hard. You know, we get the policy and come up with some money, and that's a big battle. <clears throat> but when you, it actually comes down to the Williamstown, Williamstown Middle School, and how do you get the bus, and how do you, get the technology and how do you put it in there and then how do you get the school board to be supportive when At this time, a lot of all other people are contending. Go to the PAL to get so it's, it's really, you know, it's the work of building community that, uh, and this is an essential tool 
uh, and it's just a thrill for me to be here and to see the, the good work that you all have done. And I know for you it must be, because again, really, she has been the pioneer here. Yeah, I, um, I saw early school buses in rural Southern California for the kids of migrant workers yeah. and the superintendent who put them on Wi-Fi on the buses. <clears throat> I saw it in rural New Mexico with your colleagues that are yeah. yeah. And you just look at that and you say, we could do this everywhere. Yeah. It's technically possible. We're creative enough. Right. We just have to press forward, get things done in Washington, and then leave it in the hands of people who really make it happen. So yeah. thank you for what you're doing. It, it's 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 really inspiring for the both of us to be here to see the good work you've done. You know, cooperation is better than conflict, right? You get things done. Mm -hmm. So thank you all. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Want to take a big group picture? Can we do that? Yeah. <laughs> Let's try to do that. Can we do that? <laughs> With you too. We got the school board. You yeah. guys. Yeah. You guys have the hardest job in politics. Do you want to do it? Um, <laughs>